I don't know about you, but one of the best things about being a kid was the imagination. I would pick up a toy and be immediately transported into a colorful world that became whatever I wanted it to be. Toy Commander on a Dreamcast captures that playful essence of being a kid. You get to be a kid again, playing with toys in every room of the house. And don't worry, the parents aren't home, so you don't have to follow all their silly rules like don't flood the kitchen and don't set fires in the attic. Toy Commander is actually more about defeating your toys rather than playing with them. Your teddy bear is feeling neglected because you're starting to grow up. He's organized a mutiny. Him and many other grudge-holding toys have taken over the house. You start in the kitchen, and using a handful of vehicles, you carry out missions. There's a timer for each one of these missions, and if you're able to beat four of them under a certain time, you'll get to fight the boss of the kitchen. You'll do the same for every room of the house, as they're slowly unlocked. There are seven rooms, each with seven missions. The kitchen, the children's bedroom, the parents' bedroom, the hallway, the garage, the attic, and the living room. There's also a final battle in the basement. If you do really well in each of these rooms, a hidden area will open up in the yard. I won't show you what goes on there, but I will say it involves graham crackers. You will carry out each mission using one to three vehicles. Most of them can fire weapons, but some can only pick up objects and drop them off. The ones that can fire weapons have a limited supply of missiles, bombs, and mines. And they also have an unlimited machine gun. Each of these items can be powered up twice. Every vehicle also has a limited supply of gas. If you run out, you don't stall, you just go very slowly. It's important to go around picking up all the icons, including some that fill your gas, repair your damage, and refill your weapons. Many of them are hidden behind furniture, so you do have to do some exploration. So what's my overall opinion of Toy Commander? I think it's spectacular, and I think it's the crown gem of the Dreamcast library. The one word that I think sums it up best is variety. Each mission is unique. Here's some of the mission goals. Destroy Godzilla. Bomb a base in the bathtub. Save farm animals from aliens. Win a race. Cook food. And one of my favorites, Fly down the toilet and destroy the cockroach queen who lives down in the septic tank. So yeah, there's a lot of variety, but each mission is also fun to execute. And the game saves your best times. The house is bright and colorful and filled with tons of detail. Very impressive for 1999. It's a lot of fun to just forget about the specific mission and just go exploring around the house. There's pictures of the family on the wall, specific books on the shelves. There's even a Dreamcast in the living room. And there's a Saturn in the attic. You can interact with light switches, faucets, the cat, and even a projection TV. That cat I mentioned also has a litter box complete with a turd and some wet spots in it. The bottom line is that it feels like you're really inside someone's home. What elevates the game even higher is the music. The collection of tunes is very different from any other games, but still fun to listen to. Each tune lasts a very long time, which is good because the missions can last a long time too. Let me play some of it right here.
I had most fun with the missions that involve air combat. It's enjoyable to make a large turn and make a run at the missile batteries and tanks that are situated throughout the room. The boss battles are also intense. They take a ton of hits to destroy, and they're very relentless with their own firepower. They do a lot of trash talking leading up to the battle, so it's always a good feeling when you finally take one of them down. When you're driving a ground-based vehicle, that's when you come across a flaw in the game, and it's a big one. There's a lot of ramps that take you up walls, onto tables, and onto bookshelves. But keeping the vehicle straight while going up one is very hard to do. The analog thumbstick is just too sensitive. The end result is a lot of falling off ramps. I thought it might be better if they would have put guardrails on the ramps. But then I came across the stage that actually does have guardrails and it didn't really help. Instead of going onto the ramp, I just banged into the front of it. The camera can also be a problem sometimes, especially when you get up close to something. So it could be quite a clumsy game. But all of the game's positive attributes cancel out the negative ones, in my opinion. No cliché, the French developer behind all this really knew how to harness the power of the Dreamcast. They would create a spiritual sequel called Toy Racer, but it was only released in Europe. A PC version of Toy Commander was also in the works, but it was cancelled. To this day, Toy Commander remains a Dreamcast exclusive. Toy Commander may not have gotten a sequel, but there are some additional missions that can be played if you have a couple of demo discs that came with the Dreamcast magazine. They are basically small expansion packs. One disc featured a Christmas-based mission. If you put the Toy Commander disc inside a CD-ROM drive, you can access artwork and some desktop icons. It's just a little more icing on the cake. I should mention that the game also has a multiplayer mode, but I didn't have the audience available to play it. It definitely doesn't look like it was a tacked on mode of the game. It has four player capture the flag and four player deathmatch. One last thing to point out is that this is one of the earliest games to feature widescreen support. You just have to select it on the options screen. Toy Commander is an enduring game that I keep going back to every few years. I really wish somebody would create a sequel, because with today's powerful game consoles, they can create a very realistic house to play in. Bottom line, Toy Commander, Dreamcast, awesome, get it. This rating is a measurement of how fun it is to play this game today, compared to all other games. A 10 does not mean perfect, it just means it's more fun than 90% of the games out there. See the description for more details.